Good evening and welcome to the June 24th regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. At this time, if you could silence your cell phones, if you have them, and stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First order of business. Uh, um, I would say Secretary Friedel, but Member Friedel, would you take the uh, uh, roll call? President Singer. Here. Vice President McFarland, absent. Secretary Baker, absent. Treasurer Friedel, here. Member Blasey, absent. Member Lauterbach. Here. Member Rausch. Here. Great, thank you. Moving into the consent agenda, uh, are there any items that anyone would like removed from the consent agenda and discussed individually? Seeing none, uh, we have item 2.1, approval of the minutes from June 10th. Item 2.2, staff members uh, who announced resignation. Item 2.3, which is approval of the payment of the school system bills for the month of May 2019. Item 2.4, textbooks uh, presented for the 28th period of examination uh, on May 20th, 2019. And item 2.5, which is approval uh, requested to authorize legal payments to Lusk and Albertson. So this time I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Lauterbach, uh, seconded by Rausch, and... All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. And the consent agenda passes unanimously. We'll move into item three, which is presentations to the board. Uh, we have for action item 3.1, the 2018-19 final budget amendment. Mr. Cooper? Okay. We're just waiting for it to start this time. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, as you know, at the last board meeting, and I can... Quickly go to the next slide, but we started back on April 15th uh, with the budget workshop. Um, on June 10th, we presented the 2019-20 uh, budget to the board, held a public hearing. And then tonight, what we'll be asking you to do is two things, both uh, adopt the 1920 budget and approve the final 1819 budget. And as you know, we make adjustments throughout the year. Uh, our budgets for schools really reflect just How's our income? Where's it coming from? It's not really advisory in nature and how we're spending it. So I'm going to cover the first part and then we'll have you vote on the, uh, the uh, final amendment to the 1819 budget. And then we'll go ahead and uh, I'll turn it over back to uh, Mr. Chiro and he'll uh, go through a summary of uh, our budget for uh, 1920, which we presented the last time. All right, for 1819, what I have there is three columns for you just so you can get the uh, picture of where you've been. Uh, back in June of 2018, we, of course, had to estimate a budget just like we're doing for 1920. Uh, not unusual. We knew pretty much what we were going to get funding-wise, but as grants come in, things happen. They change through the course of the year. So the first column just shows where we started in June of 2018 with the original budget. And then in March, we came back to you, we revised it, uh, and, and you can see from looking at those two columns that both uh, the revenues and expenditures increased at that point in time, um, and at, at a point, one increased a little more than the other, so you saw that how much we thought we'd have for surplus went down just a little bit. So if I can direct your attention to that last column there, uh, 1819, that's our estimate right now, June, as we're closing out the books of where we're going to end up. Um, you'll see that the revenues uh, stand at almost exactly $84 million. That's not very far off the March estimate. We're looking about the same. Um, that, that I was just pretty close to that. Expenditures right now, um, they went down slightly from when we saw them in March. And we would also imagine as we officially close out the books at the end of this week, uh, we'll pick up more of that as we always talk about that next uh, row going across the budget variance. Um, I'm estimating that at uh, 1%. Historically, it's been coming in between 2 and 3. I think we've looked at it enough to know that that 1% will more likely be bigger than that. Um, I'd approximate it somewhere around 2 to 2.5. 
when it's all said and done, but that's the auditors, and it's also closing the books in the very last day to see exactly what we spent and, and what money still is, is sitting out there. So that will come up. So we're up slightly. We look to put a surplus, which would go to fund balance, of $1.5 million. And that would make us, again, for the unassigned fund balance. And I just want to remind you, you see lots of different fund balances here. You see um, just the regular fund balance, which doesn't take into account if anything has been assigned or restricted. Uh, and we've been using unass uh, unassigned lately because, as you know, not only do we have gifts like the STEM gifts we've been getting, but we have money we've side a little for copiers down the road for technology. In fact, there's an item tonight where you're spending a little bit of that technology on computers for sixth graders. So the unassigned uh, fund balance will stand at 16 million six hundred twenty-two thousand approximately, and that's about 19.9 percent .9 of your expenditures. And so that's the adjustments that we're bringing forth. You got a copy of the full uh, budget in your in your board packet, but that would require you to um, make that amendment. Very good. At this time, I'll entertain a motion for item 3.1, which is a final uh, budget amendment. Make a motion to approve the final 2018-2019 budget. Support. support. Moved by Roush, support by Friedel. And at this time, we'll open it up to discussion. Any comments, questions, concerns? No big surprises. Right, we've been talking about it all along, so. It's always good, no surprises. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the work uh, on the amendment. Or, uh, yeah, on the amendment. So at this time, uh, we'll go into a vote. Do we need a roll call here? You do not. We do not? Okay. It's, all re it's all up to you. All right, like. all in favor of approving item 3.1, the final budget amendment for 2018-19, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. We'll move into item 3.2, which is again for action. We have approval of the 2019-20 general operating budget. Mr. Sherrill. I'll be brief because we had a nice presentation the last uh, meeting from Mr. Cooper. Um, so it is the same budget we presented last time that we're asking for you to approve. Um, it does... Uh, it is probably a little more conservative than we have in, in the past because of the... Um, Two, three different variant, but very variable budgets that we've gotten out of Lansing, and so they're so far apart. The three budgets, we really can't find the common theme in the three of them right now, and so we got to anticipate where that could go. As well as you know that our October count uh, determines our student count and determines the revenue there as well. So um, I think most likely you're going to adopt this budget, knowing that it will change dramatically, and most likely when we have those numbers somewhere after October. Uh, we will come back with probably a, a budget amendment a little earlier than we have based on what Lansing does, based on what our student enrollment does. Um, it does show expenses over revenue, um, but I, just looking at Bob's budget adjustment <coughs> from this year of about $1.5 million, where we were, where we were um, revenue over expenses, if we did that again with the budget variance, we would expect to be near balanced, if not balanced, budget at the end of the year, which is probably about where we should be at this point in time going forward. So um, we're asking for that approval of that budget for the next school year. Great. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, I move that the proposed 2019-2020 general operating budget be adopted. Support. Moved by Lutterbach, support by Rausch. At this time, we'll open it up for comment. Hopefully, we get a budget soon from the state. Yes. So. It's been uh, eight years since we've had to uh, wait the, till after June for a budget. So uh, this is new for me. Ever since I've been here, uh, we haven't had to wait. Um, but I feel very confident in looking at all the, the budget we did put together. And, um, and even though it is expenses over uh, revenue, uh, it's still it's not deficit spending. And that's important to, n to understand. And, um, and we've set ourselves up well to, um, to be able to do that. And uh, I think you're right as far as um, what we've seen in the past, if we should... Um, if all goes well, we'll end up even ahead of the game, if not balanced. So that's good good news, too. Hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm anxious to hear what happens with the House and the Senate and the governor's um, 
budget to see where we end up. And a little nervous about the house uh, budget that they've, they've uh, put forth, but uh, we know it's time will tell. I hope that whatever budget comes forward, that some of the research that was done to look at how schools should be funded is utilized in that decision. Uh, the state has invested and taken a lot of time to identify where we need to spend, and, um, and it would be a shame to just put that on a shelf and not use the research that they, they took the time to, to get. So. I wouldn't expect that budget until <clears throat> some fall, so um, I don't think we'll have that from the state. If you look up going forward, they're not um, in session very much this summer, so I wouldn't think that's going to occur until the fall. The other thing I'd add is the auditors have been in for the pre-audit and beginning to work, and rec if you recall, uh, we're the first ones out of the box, so a lot of work by our business department to be first, and they present to you traditionally in October. September, October, September, yeah. September, October, and that variance could be captured. Some of that variance that will come back with the auditing will be captured in that budget and change this one as well mm -hmm. right at that point in time. I think I read even today that they are, are not looking to have any kind of budget until October, later in October now. So Right. It's probably not such a bad thing if they take their time and really look at the Correct. research and instead of just rush something out and... Uh, and not take into account all those matters. Okay, if there's no more comment, then we'll move into a vote. Uh, this is for item 3.2, approval of the general operating budget. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, and it passes <coughs> unanimously. Moving into item 3.3 for action, we have sixth grade Chromebook purchases. Mr. Cooper. Yeah, as you know, uh, and we talked about this at a couple of our budget meetings, but uh, it, currently they're using laptops in the middle schools, and of course they've been using Chromebooks as they've come through uh, elementary school. Um, what we have here, sixth grade, because when they come in, they'll let us concentrate the laptops that are remaining uh, in, the, in the upper grades, and also if, if we have enough uh, for staff members as we go out, but we're seeking approval for a purchase order to Presidio Incorporated of Wicks, Michigan, $149,400. Um, that would provide the Chromebooks at both middle schools. Uh, that pricing is for 600 computers and also uh, includes the uh, management licenses that go with those. Um, as always, we get these through the spot bid, which is through the state of Michigan purchasing uh, ability to get the best price possible on, on these devices. Great. I would accept a motion. Make a motion to approve item 3.3, the purchase of the sixth grade Chromebooks. Support. Moved by Mr. Rush, support by Mr. Lauterbach, and we'll open it up for discussion. Bob, what would you say was going to happen to the laptops? That yeah, were they'll put some of them in. Dave's here too, so I'll let Dave give you the, the lowdown, but it's also allowed us to concentrate as some have gone out of service. That's put, what I wondered. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the ones that are in service right now are going into their fifth year, and kids being kids, they've yep. sustained some damage. So uh, we'll weed out the ones that are no good. We'll possibly use them to scavenge for spare parts to fix other ones. Um, and then uh, we'll also use some of the good ones for possibly some other purposes around the district that don't need a brand-new computer, too. Is it only eighth grade, then, or that are still in the laptop? Yes. Yeah. Five years on a laptop for kids is better than most people do at work with theirs, so. Yeah, I'm it's glad. It's pretty good. Very good. Thank Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Do you have any other comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll move into a vote. Uh, we're voting for uh, approval of spending $149,400,000 on Chromebooks for incoming sixth grade students for both middle schools. Uh, these are uh, Dell Chromebooks, and they also include the management license. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, and the motion passes unanimously. <laughs> Item four, which is a request to address the board. No hearings have been requested, but do we have anyone in the audience who would like to uh, speak to the board? 
Seeing none, we will move into item five, which is curriculum instruction and assessment. We have item 5.1 for information. We have the district and school improvement plans. Um, That's me. All right, Penny. Good evening. In compliance with Public Act 335, the district school improvement committee reviewed and gave feedback on each of the individual school plans as well as the district improvement plan. These plans describe the strategies that each building will implement to move toward 100% student proficiency. The law requires the board to approve the district plan and each of the building plans. So these plans are for your information tonight and will be brought back to you at the next meeting for your action. Very good. Thank you, Penny. And those will be available uh, in the curriculum office if anyone wants to review those. Okay. Can we get them in PDF format? Any chance? Absolutely. All right, great. Okay, moving into item six, which is finance facilities and operations. We have 6.1, which is for action. Um, Mr. Cooper. Yeah, we have two gifts tonight because of the size of the gifts that you need to vote on and approve. One's 5,000 for the band program uh, support from the H.A. Stallion Music Boosters. The other one is for $5,745 for hockey uniforms from the Midland High School Athletic Boosters Club, and those require your action tonight. Okay, very good. This time I would entertain a motion. I move that we accept the two gifts, uh, one in the amount of $5,000, one in the amount of $5,745 as proposed. Support. Moved by Lauterbach, support by Rausch. Open for discussion or comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's always great to uh, uh, have gifts to approve. All in favor of... Uh, Accepting these gifts totaling $10,745, say aye. 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 All opposed? And the motion passes unanimously. Yeah. Moving into item 6.2, which is also for information. Okay. Uh, 6.2 is for information only. We have 14 gifts totaling $26,947.64. Um, wide variety, uh, quite a few there from the Boosters Club at Midland High School. Um, but others along the way, still robotics coming in and different gifts to um, uh, people out there. Also, while I'm with the informational, I direct your attention to 6.3. Uh, this is a gift of an item, only reason that it's separated there, but a uh, wheelchair was donated to uh, Northeast Middle School so that they would have that available if something were to come up or a student needed one. So all that for information, but as always, we appreciate the level of giving we get, even if you remember this is our second board meeting in June, and this is twice now you've, you've heard gifts in what's normally the slower time of what's going on. So it's, it's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thanks, Bob. Uh, we have moving it into item 7, which is human resources. We have 7.1. Brian? I'll take that. Uh, we have one memoriam this evening. Uh, we wish to send along our sympathies to the family of Paul Sanderson, who passed away on June the 6th. Mr. Sanderson was an office technical professional at the Science Resources Center for 15 years, uh, retiring in 2013. Our hearts go out to their family. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Moving into item 8, which is correspondence to and from the board, uh, we have Letters going from the Board of Education to different donors. Uh, item 9, which is scheduled activities. For information, we have all uh, Board of Education meetings listed in the agenda. Item 10 is our study discussion session. So at this point, I'll uh, roll through the board and see if there's any comments. John? None for me. Um, just, Bob, this is your last meeting. Congratulations on your successful career and thank you for your service um, and then uh, you know reflecting on the budget especially as a new board member it's I'm very appreciative of those who have come before me because I think the school boards along with our staff in the past really did our the hard work and the sacrifice it took to get us to a healthy fund balance so that in times like these we can give back and dip into that a little bit so it's just uh, you know Sitting in this position, it makes our life a lot easier now. So, I pass along a word of appreciation to those before me. Right. I think Mike's blood pressure was a little higher at the beginning of mm. his. <laughs> well, it might have had to do with 75 pounds less than me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mary? 
I'm good. Okay, very good. Uh, well, I looked at the superintendent communique, and there's a lot of great information out there, so uh, I encourage everyone to take a look at that. And um, uh, I guess the other thing that I'm uh, looking forward to is I know Mike's uh, involved in the Vision 2030 with uh, Midland, and, um, and I think it's important to have our superintendent involved in that and uh, really working with our community to uh, make Midland a, a better, better and better place to live and grow up. So thank you for participating in that for us. And we have a group of people that are going to Africa uh, Saturday and uh, Kenya, and that's with the Inclusion and Diversity Group and uh, sponsored by Dow Chemical, and we certainly appreciate those opportunities for our staff. It's just going to help us uh, to really move forward with inclusion and diversity and gives us opportunities that we couldn't, couldn't uh, support uh, just on our normal budget. So very appreciative. And that's all I have. Mike? I um, wrote, wrote to you a little bit about the lacrosse, which continues yes. to grow. And so the Michigan High School Athletic Association has agreed for the cooperative agreement of the two schools to combine one team for one more year. But then the following year, we will um, end up having two teams. We're at that point where the growth is um, gone forward, we will have to begin to plan for that because that'll be a, a little bit of a budget expenditure as well as practice space and uniforms and coaching. So that's why I give you that update. Press box update, we were a little worried. Um, Three Rivers had gotten, reissued a, a completion date of middle of September, which would not have worked. And so today we had a very good meeting because it's now back on uh, schedule with a little extra work and we should be done before any athletic contest start in August. Um, so thank you, Three Rivers, for working with us on that piece of it. July 15th, which although, Cindy, I see July 16th as our board meeting in the minutes. Do I have the right date, the 15th or the 16th? Our next board meeting in July, um, we are doing a uh, tour of the construction projects at 4.30 p.m. if you'd like to partake. Mm -hmm. And some of you have done that in the past, so make sure you dress appropriately because they are not completed construction projects you'll be walking in some messy spaces but so far that's going reasonably well um, the biggest issue that we've had is the addition being delayed because of the uh, block and mortar um, work that can't be done in some of those rut wet conditions but we, we recall that that was a project that was not going to be completed before the start of the year anyway that won't prevent us from opening it just may prevent when we turn over the new media center to those uh, to Adams Elementary Early enrollment numbers, if you can start watching those, which we do, we watch them forever, look very, very good um, so far. And so we think we can maybe get lucky and build, beat that trend again. And I believe today at 3 o'clock we heard the Midland Academy was a closing. They don't capture a lot of our students. But um, I think we've had a play in that, that more people are choosing us. Um, but that would be a plus, and if we can attract some of those parents um, over here, that would be very much a plus for us as well going forward. Um, auditors were in, as I mentioned earlier, to begin the pre-audit, so the business department has been extremely busy going forward. And the last thing I'm going to talk is about Mr. Cooper. And so um, when I would be, when you began to select me, now you guys were here then. I was just looking around thinking, wow, none of the board members here were, were in that process, how quick that changes. But at that time, Bob will remember, uh, I was given the, um, the leadership team and said Bob was an interim, and it was my choice to decide if he gets to stay. And it take, took me about two weeks to say, say that interim title needs to come off of his name um, right away. It took you that long? It took me that long. So. <laughs> um, but, you know, truly I've worked with a lot of people in my 35-plus years, and Bob, you're up there as one of the, the finest people I've ever worked with, and there's no other way to describe it. His character and his belief in this district is outstanding, and he should be honored for that. So, And I know Brian Penny and I and Jeff are very much going to miss him because he's probably our calming factor as well. So I'd like to tell you that I'm going to become the older guy, oldest guy on that, and I'd be the calming factor, but I would be probably lying about that. So. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. I got to do this. Thanks, Bob. You're going to be missed. And that's it for me. All right, very good. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting.
So moved. So moved. Board support. Moved by Fredell. Support by Roush. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. And this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.